Hello everyone, Om Shanti, greetings of peace. Welcome to Brahma Kumari's uh, Meditation Center, Silicon Valley. Today is the third class on the series, Being Busy But Stress-Free. And um, in the last few classes, we've been talking about what causes stress, what damages do we see from stress, what are certain myths that exist about stress and that only cause stress to grow more. Because if we have some incorrect beliefs, we might be unknowingly inviting more stress in our life or sustaining it, right? Not getting rid of it. So the attempt from Brahma Kumaris is to bring about uh, shine light of the truth uh, with more reasoning and more deeper understanding. And uh, today's class, we start focusing on certain methods to uh, be stress-free. And then last class also, we focus more about uh, long-term ideas on building resilience um, in ourselves so that stress doesn't impact us at all. But um, as always, we'll get uh, first started with a guided meditation. So request you all to join me. Let's get the body in a comfortable posture. Feet on the ground. Back and head straight. And body as still as possible. A good posture helps in bringing focus and keeping the self awake. Take a few deep breaths and let go. Let go of everything external and internal. Sometimes we hold stress about when am I going to change? When I'm going to finish all the things I have? How will I do it? I'm weak. Let us keep all of that aside. And for the next few moments, no blame on the self, no blame on life, and no blame on others or God. Instead, at peace with everything. Peace is very nourishing to the body, to the atmosphere, to the people in the environment, to Mother Nature. Deep silence comes from deep security. How can one develop security living in this world that we are, where there are nuclear atom bombs, where there are chemical weapons of viruses, where there are eruptions, floods, tsunamis, where there is extreme violence, greed, Anger. How does one feel secure? One is the physical security, and the other is the security of the self. 
We need both. We need our finances, body, relations, work to be secure. And we also want our own self to be secure. We also want to be comfortable in our own skin. That is, be secure in our own personality. Not having to put a mask or try to be someone else so that people like me. God is loved by all and so are certain great souls. They didn't try to be someone who others would love. They were themselves but their personality was so sweet, so special that everybody loved them. Most importantly, they were comfortable in their own skin. And you can be comfortable in your own skin when you've accepted yourself. When you are not hungry for proving who you are. When you are not restless about getting external validation. We need radical acceptance of the self. That is when this hunger of wanting to be appreciated and recognized will end. And that is when we will feel secure. This security brings immense peace immense love and immense joy. You are no more threatened. Just like we feel when we are with a baby, we feel secure because the baby doesn't judge us. It smiles at us irrespective of who we are. And that is why a baby brings to our face. Radical acceptance comes from a deep connection with the Supreme. This connection allows me to understand that moment by moment Supreme's love for me is stable, unconditional, unwavering, constant love. When I receive it, it fills my inner apron. I feel full. With the highest on high, the most ever noble being accepts me, loves me. Because in his eyes, I am always special. I'm a carbon copy of him, very beautiful. And I start seeing the true image of who I am from God's eye. Then there is self-love. This love heals me. And where there is inner security, then there is no jealousy, no fear, no hatred. There is only love for everyone. 
there is deep regard sincere respect genuine respect for all such a person is never under any threat nobody can dare to harm a person who is so secure who is so full of love because this being is protected by god's blessings and every soul's blessings there's nobody who can go past the secure firewall of blessings in no security brings physical security that brings immense peace immense love immense joy that is who i am i trust i am peace i am love i am joy a very warm welcome everyone to class number 3 today we focus on stop stressing and start living which is really to focus on solutions to get over stress so we'll start off with the assignment from last week i want to first uh, see if anybody got to practice any of these three things eating very slowly and calmly going without multitasking and creating a time buffer did anybody try any of these uh, solutions if so can you please share uh, on chat Ah that's great thank you I did when I remembered it was beneficial I tried to eat slowly I I found I ate less that is plus one so it it because you really appreciate every morsel and um, no multitasking wonderful this, I I am someone who who was maybe you could say 200% on the stress level if there is anything called 200% that was who Meghna was literally like a mad woman running everywhere you know so much on her plate first of all she took up too much didn't take any rest all the time stressed eating like you know in few seconds few minutes just as if no time for eating either and multitasking slowing down wonderful and thank you so much yeah. this is wonderful these tips have benefited me tremendously especially i can't stress on the first one eating if you can slow down right like come on we are working so hard can't i at least have my meal peacefully in good vibrations it helps exponentially because when food is eaten slowly the spirit gets empowered and then the next step is obviously to when you are cooking cook with that pure peace and love so you are then multiplying your peace and where you have developed peace and patience stress automatically it weakens the power of stress weakens this is a very tremendous and multitasking same thing time buffer that for me megna another strong ego that megna had was being punctual it's not a bad thing being punctual is a nice thing but not at the cost of you know hasting to everything multitasking instead it's okay to raise your hand and say you know what i'm getting late i tried my best but i'm getting late but i can't spoil my relationships i can't ruin the health of my body i can't do poor quality work because i have to be punctual yes i started adding more buffer obviously and started reducing the number of tasks these are super helpful i'm so glad uh, that you all got to try uh, so we talked in the last class about the priorities that these are not the right priorities right megna's old priorities was work first 
second was self third was relation and the second and third would interchange sometimes relationship so self came last or other times self second and then relations third right so this was a wrong priority order we talked about why all of you agreed self is the number one relations and work so today's class we focus on what does it mean to prioritize the self and why does the self get deprioritized even though we want to automatically gets deprioritized we understand that as well so action consciousness increases stress in general you know many of us are working in corporate companies or we are you know both men and women these days are working that is both parents are working or even if you are an individual um, or just a spouse without kids generally everybody is working and if you even if you're not working even at home especially in america there's just too many things to do and take care of so there are if you start our day and end our day there're just too many tasks and entire day goes in that so when we are only task focused that causes stress to increase and we'll try to understand that how typically first thing that we get up right uh, is old meghna talking about old meghna this is meghna by the way for someone who uh, some of you who might be new i am meghna uh, so my name is meghna but i keep separating meghna is a third person to me because i the soul is on a very beautiful journey and meghna is the one who wasn't on that journey earlier right so her first thing that she get, got up in the morning for her her big to do list will be in front of her so her she never ever asked herself how are you feeling no first thing would be i have to do this and she would rush okay i have to exercise or i have to uh, do this uh, in the kitchen or i have to do this for the kids or to, these are the things that are pending at work so her whole morning itself would start with doing for many of us that doing could be opening the phone checking emails checking news checking social media it's an action so without even knowing how we are feeling what the inner being is feeling we get into actions then typically if we are not taking care of our inner self if we are not on a spiritual journey most of us are generally stressed if we are not stressed we might be fearful we might be insecure we might be frustrated we might be feeling jealous competitive why is that other person getting ahead why don't i ever get recognized why do parents only like this other sibling so this is the first awareness when we get up so if i am only aware of being stressed impatient restless man i have to rush i have to rush i have to quickly brush i have to quickly exercise i have to quickly get through i have to drive quickly generally that's make us commentary inside and then with that kind of awareness although we are not aware i'm not i didn't even ask myself how am i feeling but that is there in the back in the backdrop right every time there is some kind of a stress or some kind of frustration pressure inside with that kind of pressure i'm performing all actions it's a big question mark what will be the output of those actions where the inner being is feeling little restless little impatience what will be the output when that is the state in which i am doing all of this can anything productive can anything quality come out from a state where you are very stressed it is a big question mark and then we expect uh, i don't know how i am feeling i start like that i don't exactly know sometimes we know we are tired or i'm stressed sometimes we know but most of the times we are not even aware even if we are aware we neglect it so what later you can feel better so we start into our action mode whole day goes in toiling at at work we are through emails meetings working whatever that type of work we might be doing we get back home tired then we come home and we start whether it is dinner preparation or getting dinner from outside whatever that is taking care of the chores then we feel after i am done at work at home everywhere then i will become someone people at work will recognize people at home will thank me so we do everything in the hope of becoming someone 
But what is this becoming someone? The result is a big question mark. I don't know the outcome, whether people will like my work or not. And especially when I'm doing it in so much stress, who knows what the quality is. So we are hoping that entire doing is all stressed because I don't know what the results are going to be. I'm very anxious. I'm anticipating that it'll be good, but I don't know. And if that result is not what I expected, then I'm even more stressed. Because generally, when you start your journey with your inner being being all worked up, then most of the times your relationships will not be that good. We try to cover it up with good polished words and some etiquettes, manners, politeness, but it's all very superficial. Not always maybe, but many times when the stress load increases, everything becomes very superficial very um, transient. We, we don't have depth in the relationship anymore. So for example, I can take my own ex uh, Meghna's example where she used to be an, in pandemic, especially, right? We Many of us were working from home. So you're doing the housework at home and then you're also doing the office work. And while you're doing busy office work, suppose a family member comes and says, hey, I need your help with this. Or can you look into this? Can you tell me what it is? Or even at work, suppose you're doing something and somebody says, hey, it's quick, can you help me with this? You already have 20 things on your mind. And this is a very simple thing that this person could have gone and looked at the help center articles or figured it out and they're coming to me. Unknowingly, whether it is this colleague, you might say, hey, you know what, I'll send you this help link. Why don't you just check it out? It's very easy. You might be a little abrupt or at home, maybe even more abrupt. Don't you see I'm so busy? Can't you do anything by yourself? Why am I always the one who you come to ask for help? Why can't you figure out? Why couldn't you go and talk to somebody else? So now my stress has caused my relationship to be spoiled. The ego will say, Meghna, obviously, you know, people should understand. How much can you help? The ego will try to justify. But the conscience Soul is such a beautiful creation that in, inner voice starts biting. And they only came for asking for little help. You could have done it. Five minutes only, right? Why do I have to be mean? So I was hoping after doing all of these actions, I will become someone. Then once I become someone, I will be happy. This is what we are hoping. Each one of us, we are focusing on our actions, doing, becoming, hoping to become someone so that I can be happy, so that I can be honorable. So this poor being is in the end. Whole life goes in this action consciousness and hoping to become someone so that I can be. And how long do I experience that being? So if I get a promotion for how long will I be peaceful? If I get recognized, um, if I, you know, get an award, how long will I be happy? How long will I feel honorable? Question for all of you. How long would one feel really happy if you got promoted or if you got an award? How long does it last? Share your responses on chat. Few days. Okay. You're lucky. Few days. <laughs> a lot of times it doesn't. Suppose you come home and there is a big short time. And suppose you come home and you find, find out there is a bad news or something, right? Doesn't even last few days at times. It all depends. Sometimes it can just be few seconds. But see, our entire life is, we are running our life like that. In doing, doing, doing. Thinking we will become and then I will be. So this being is just getting pushed and procrastinated. When will I be happy? When I will be peaceful? I need to finish all of this. I need to become someone. All of this needs to happen. Then I will be. But it, this being poor thing is becoming even more stressed because the becoming is not happening. The results are not coming. So I become even more stressed. And this stressed being, even more stressed being causes more results to be down. 
self development and analysis are always procrastinated yeah this is again us right uh, it's up to me if i want i, I don't have to megna used to as well but not anymore for her that is the top priority now because she's seen the benefit once you say that you know for this one year or at least one month fully i'm not going to miss anything i'm going to take care of myself once you've experienced the you've tasted the fruit the results of you know self investment you will never stop and that is megna story she started with just one month i'll do half an hour every day now she spent hours because she saw the unlimited benefits right and uh, so absolutely this is so critical because this is a vicious cycle stress is causing more relationships to go soiled and uh, more bad uh, you know quality work productivity goes down and then more stress and this is a vicious cycle so we are not at all prioritizing if we are only focused on what can i do for my relatives what can i do at work how can i do all these chores if that is all is in my awareness then this is not prioritization of the self this is only going to increase stress so this uh, picture of the iceberg right we all know that iceberg very little 10% is visible and 90% of is of it is beneath the ocean and that is where the titanic ship hit the iceberg and we know what happened to it because of not seeing invisible iceberg right which is beneath the surface so for majority of us we are focusing only on the 10% of our potential we are just very action conscious let me do this let me finish this then i will become someone so our focus has become so much on this external stuff of actions uh performance uh, you know productivity where can i gain more information how can i develop more iq total focus on this this is where we are living and this is where most of the stress comes where i am only focusing on the external ability whereas 90% is the being many of us have not even harnessed even 5% of our potential at least megna had not now day by day and still i haven't extracted all of my potential because there is so much we are understanding ourselves is a huge journey it's a marathon but a beautiful marathon that gets you many benefits so inner space has many thoughts feeling habits personalities behaviors we have values and beliefs these are driving our actions so much of our actions are all um, you know automatic running on an automatic mode so i need to know all of these inner dimension what is that inner dynamics that is influencing the outer sphere of my life i need to be aware so this is where i move away from being a human doing i become a human being there is a reason why we are not called human doing because the being has unlimited potential and such a being can perform anything they can do hundreds what more than hundreds of things every day and not be one bit tired that is the power 90% power that we are not utilizing and this is my own personal experience there have been days where so much on the plate a lot of challenges and you know this friction in relationship yet not one bit of tiredness got everything done with high quality that is called unleashing your potential not like you know trying to multitask and then blame others and feeling tired and not sleeping in the night trying to work over the weekend that is where we are working at that 10% potential just at the surface level very difficult life so method to proactively prioritize the self how would this order be this becoming doing being how would the order be if you could share 
between uh, we saw right uh, what we said was it was doing becoming and being that is the order most of us are following what would the right order be if i have to focus the self focus on the self Very good. Yes, being, doing, becoming. Yeah. Thank you there. Yep, everybody's being, doing, becoming. So being, doing, becoming is the right order here. Um, so let's look at it. Being is first thing in the morning. Give yourself time. Prioritize yourself when the entire family is sleeping at least one hour, two hours before the family wakes up. Get up and take care of yourself. And it's not yoga and a walk only that is taking care of the body, which is also good. But taking care of the real self by some empowering uh, material, reading some something empowering, meditation whether you do guided meditation in the beginning or learn how to meditate on your own that is the first thing and ask yourself how are you feeling give yourself one big hug that you're such a beautiful being and if you believe in god take his vision how does he see me right now how much love is he pouring on me let me take all of that love let me absorb it this is typically how meghna's day starts Good morning, sweet. Uh, you know, I, we call him Baba. So, good morning, Baba. I'm here. I'm seeing how much love you're pouring on me. My love to you. I know I'm very special. I'm such a beautiful creation. I'm just like you. So peaceful, so patient. So, that is the first door. To be aware of my inner state. To fill it with a lot of power, my own love. That is how my day starts. Then your doing automatically gets complemented by your inner state. Because you, you just not just, your feeling about who you are is not merged. Oh yeah, yeah, I am patient. Oh yeah, yeah, I am peaceful. No, it's in an emerged form because you coiled it out. You felt it in the morning. You felt how God was embracing you. So when that feeling is so much in your active, in your awareness, not sleeping, yeah, 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 Meghna is that. No, aware, you're feeling it, then that feeling is complementing every action. When your inner state is so calm, heart is so full of love, you're enjoying every moment, then your every action is filled with high precision, accuracy, quality, Productivity automatically becomes fast because everything is so clear. There's no confusion. Should I do this? Should I do that? That comes from a stressed mind. But when you are in such a peaceful state, there is absolute clarity. No confusion. So much love in your heart that every person is coming to help you. This has also been the personal experience of many people who are practicing meditation that any big task they have to do, suddenly everybody comes and offers. They didn't even ask, but people come and offer and they help out. So when you're doing is with full clarity, accurate decision making, high quality, full cooperation, what will you become? Automatically, whatever you, everybody will recognize your work. Everybody will be saying thank you. That production of that outcome is so beautiful that it automatically makes you even more peaceful. You can call it even more or you can say you will remain peaceful, joyful, happy, loveful. So now this becoming empowers the being because the end result was so beautiful. You, you, you know from your heart that you put your 100% in this action. There was full concentration there was full sincere dedication 
so automatically the end result is beautiful and you feel good about yourself so the being gets empowered when the becoming is so powerful and then this strong being once again will perform great actions will see great results so it's a vicious cycle not a vicious cycle it's a beautiful cycle now where the being is strengthening the actions and the honor of the self self honor is in being who you are so inner state has the power to handle the toughest situation not just handle but handle it with grace with absolute grace and so you will not find megna any more like a mad woman running here and there with lot of grace and elegance with a big smile on her face she is getting everything done when i'm walking i'm smiling when i'm in office i'm smiling when i'm writing emails i'm smiling because the self is becoming full of honor because you know aware of who i am actions are filled with quality it it stamps you know then then the results become so great then those results stamp your self honor saying make na indeed high potential seeing it already so this is the way we want to be this is what is called proactively prioritizing the self any questions so far any any questions we'll also leave some time in the end for questions but any questions so far any thoughts okay why are we so action conscious question for all of you why are we human doings why are we so attracted towards task responsibilities work why do we always want to do 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 oops positive action helps me helps keep me mindful and present it's easier to measure and see progress when it's a small task than it's checked off it makes us feel productive so well said this is the trap we are all in we feel good when something is done i accomplish something we need some proof to feel good about ourselves that i'm capable of getting things done we like those check marks in megna's day used to go in doing this check marks let me finish this let me finish that she didn't know how to rest whole day would go in finishing those check marks and the night again she would say okay all done for today but tomorrow there's a big list i have to put again check mark the entire life goes like that so um, indeed one of the main reasons we are so action conscious is we are trying to prove who we are what kind of impact i can bring i'm capable i can finish this task i can finish them quickly i can do it actually very very creatively i can do it in the best possible way i can finish it very fast so we are investing our ourselves in many external fields um it could be volunteering it could be art music academic sports so many different extra curricular social circle career ladder education get multiple master degrees and we push our kids also towards this prove yourself find your identity have loads of things on your identity then you are someone special don't have just one or two things on your identity keep adding more and more labels to it right and then we feel that's why we keep working very hard in different fields we are trying to work very hard thinking that we will get more name and fame will become someone famous so then my identity will be proven so this is the vicious cycle we are in trying to prove who i am 
But what happens is we are trying to look at the success. Success is somewhere in the future. But, and there is hunger for that success that I want to be recognized. I, I want to be told that Megna, you get so many things done so quickly. You're always trying to finish things. You're always helpful. You try to get involved in many things. I'm wanting all of that. So most of the times, because we don't feel that honor, we don't feel that success at that moment, we are hungry, we are restless. We're just anticipating and in the beginning, when we start our life journey, for most of us, there is still some enthusiasm, there is excitement that, you know, it's going to be successful. It's not like we are negative in the beginning. But slowly, this starting point where I feel self-honor is not here. I'm not yet honorable. I'm not yet special. I have to reach somewhere. And even after reaching here many times, we keep feeling, no, I'm still at the bottom. I need to climb more. So throughout the action also, we feel that, so, you know, some of us, like I said, in the beginning, we are motivated. Then we start getting stressed as we see becoming is difficult. People can put roadblocks, challenges can come. So the result might not be what I wanted it to be. So when the becoming becomes challenging, that is the results don't come up as expected, then the stress starts developing. Now, this stress will now become part of my before action, during action, and even after action. So suppose I am seeing success after success, which can happen for some people. There is this greed, constant feeling of competitiveness, that fear that, man, I'm number one. Everybody's recognizing, I hope I maintain this number one. I hope I don't go down. It could be number one, it could be top 10, it could be top 25. People are crazy about these numbers. So then when that success doesn't come, you feel inferior. If it comes, you feel superior. And the hunger for gaining more continues. And it's this vicious cycle of trying to prove our self-identity makes us human doings. So this is the bottom line. Biggest problem is trying to prove self-identity actually increases stress and makes us action conscious human doings. So then what is the solution? Should I not try to prove my identity? Should I just be non-ambitious, non-goal oriented? What is the solution? Question for all of you. If I'm not supposed to be action conscious, if I'm not supposed to prove my self-identity, what is the alternative? Or is the alternative we shouldn't have any ambitions, we should go away and move to a jungle, live in Himalayas and meditate? What is the option? Work without expectations for end results, okay? Is it possible when I'm not, when I don't feel that self honor, when I don't feel full inside, can I have no expectations? When the self inside is feeling empty, when the self doesn't feel their identity has been proven, can I be without expectations for end results? It's a big question mark. So, no, yeah. So trying to prove self externally increases stress. This we need to understand uh, for sure. Um, deep down, we realize it's a never-ending battle. Have goals to stay motivated, acknowledging you are on your own unique journey. Okay. Yes, to some extent. Um, so when we... 
try when we go into this vicious circle of trying to prove the self right in the beginning we start with enthusiasm motivation we feel that upbeatness and we try to get involved in lot of things we try to take up classes we talk to people we try to learn but soon when that becoming becomes a question mark right sometimes success sometimes no recognition sometimes this then stress starts increasing when that stress becomes too much then there is also a part that this is just too much i can't take it so then we start withdrawing what's the point you know i'm getting basics i'm getting decent salary i don't want to go more higher in my career ladder i'm okay with it become lazy some people will become great greedy they are climbing the you know career ladder quickly they want to go all the way up others become lazy because they are not getting that consistent results so this inequality unpredictability changeability causes different kind of emotions but mostly lot of stress because i can't control any of the external results and this balance between satisfaction and ambition is lost both of them are qualities ambition is important because otherwise what will you learn you can't grow means you are stagnant that's not who we want to be um, so we want but we also at the same time we don't want this mad wild ambition with this no rest we want the balance between satisfaction and ambition but when we are only trying to prove the self when that is the only agenda when i'm feeling empty inside because i feel i haven't proven myself then this balance between satisfaction and ambition is lost so what is the alternative to it right so just to take a pause and ask yourself this question is real honor in staying stable and upbeat in every situation or in attempting to prove the self externally where is my honor in when we know that the world we are living in is so unpredictable is so full of inequality changeability then where is my honor in in chasing after things that i can't control in trying to make things not change when i know they are meant to change where is my honor in my honor is not in fixing and controlling the outside world but my honor is in staying stable with full of patience love dignity in spite of all the changes that are occurring in any situation not only stay stable but upbeat motivated that is when you will feel real honor that nothing outside can touch you instead we are trying to build that self honor on things that change end and are, that are meant to be uh, not be the same for all so how to keep the being elevated right in this world that we are living in how do we keep the being elevated so indeed for that this limited identities that we you know generally all of these right there are it's um, friends and family related identity interest could be um, arts music sports our own work and hobbies all of these different things we are identifying ourselves with i believe in protecting the nature i believe in being honest appearance ethnicity there are so many things that we are attaching our identity to and then everything you say it is i if you say i am that religion or if you say i am that belief then where there is i there is an attachment that that is my identity and i'll constantly try to prove it suppose your identity is i'm very patient and kind you won't believe it even that identity we try to prove so anybody who comes maybe newly joins the team i will try to be kind i'll try to be uh, sweet so that my identity is recognized and that this new person can tell me now indeed you're so kind so patient so sweet wherever i need to prove an identity means that identity is a fake identity it is not mine it's a limited identity so either we are nothing or also everything maybe maybe 
let's talk about that uh, so this physical identity is you know generally all associated with the external stuff this will first start you with motivated get you into stress and then eventually cause you to give up i don't want to prove myself anymore whatever i am is enough it is filled with competition and comparison because there is inequality everybody can't be number 1 everybody can't be the top 5 so this this constant cat race right this this race of being the number 1 or the top 10 or whatever that might be there is always this inequality there are so many kids who go through extreme low confidence because of this that they didn't get selected for their sports team or they were not the finalist in this arts competition that's going from their school they didn't get selected for the music audition they didn't get selected in the chess competition in the spelling bee there's so many different things that people are feeling that being left out right and this identity is because they are limited they cause lot of needs like if you think of yourself as the body physical appearance that's when i feel good about myself that's when i feel self honor when tell people say make now you're beautiful Now this body skin i can't control hair i can't control there's so many different things the shape of the body age of the body i can't control so it's a limited identity right which is not in my control and i'm trying to defend i'm trying to defend make us beautiful make us beautiful but i can't not in my control so we are all after such not just one identity we have 10 or 15 identities that we are trying to defend it's extreme stress it's extreme tiredness so it's needy needy person will always have expectations and where there are expectations there is emptiness because one expectation leads to 100 more if they get met 100 more expectations will give birth and in this 100 maybe 10 will get fulfilled 90 will not so how do i feel empty so anybody who is attached to this physical identities will always come up from a space of insecurities and doubts because the inner cup is not feeling that honor they feel very very insecure in their skin so indeed true identity so important i am a soul who is wearing this physical costume to play roles i don't need any honor i am already honorable child of god is nothing but honor real self is already honorable doesn't need to prove all i need to do is sit myself in that honor imagine if you are peaceful at work won't you automatically get everything that you need to Yes, it is a process. It's a journey. It's not that you know. Meghna is now trying to become someone great at work. For her, ambition is in a different place, right? Her ambition is not at workplace. Her ambition is elsewhere. But if I if I wanted, I could with that peaceful mind and plus love in my heart. Means what? I get along with every colleague. I get along with my manager. I get along with stakeholders. I get along with everyone I'm working with. Means what? bigger work is coming out so knowing the self as an honorable being then there is no comparison i don't need to compare when i am feeling good about myself what is there to feel that comparison comes where i have doubt in myself that's when i start looking has somebody else gotten better than me or oh, 10 people worse than me it's very subtle i'm making it very gross but it is very subtle that's the only way we feel secure is by comparison so if you're having to compare means you are insecure so there is absolutely no comparison no need to compare when you have the true identity and because you understand who you are and how every being is just like you a point of light there is this deep regard for every individual you are now seeing everyone as equal to you day by day this is becoming so deep part of me anybody i see god loves this person and me equally so it cuts my ego if i'm feeling low man this person is so better it cuts or if i feel i'm so better than this person it cuts that ego too 
this one line that God is seeing me with equal vision. Both of us are equal. At the soul level, both of us are equal. I could be playing the role of a manager. This person could be playing the role of a junior. Doesn't matter. Or I could be playing the role of a junior. This person could be playing the role of the VP. I don't feel fear in front of a VP anymore. We are equal. Yes, the role is different. Doesn't matter. I'm not going to give you extra respect because you're a VP. And I'm not going to give you less respect because you are somebody else. So coming from that space of equality, there is completeness. I'm already honorable. I don't need anything. Soul doesn't need anything. Soul is desireless. And that is why it feels full. Why? Because it's constant peace, constant joy, constant love. So it comes from a space of security and clarity. When you're anchored to your truth, when you don't need to prove yourself, your existence, your presence itself is honor. It's spreading vibrations of peace and love. You don't need to prove it. Then there is deep security, deep peace. So I'm going to stop here. Any questions on the session today so far? Any questions? Anybody would like to um, share anything or ask question? If you want to raise your hand, I can unmute you. Feel free to raise your hand also. No questions. So um, let me just uh, share the tips for today um, and hope you all get to try this as well. is the best way to being meditation. It helps. If you don't, uh, you know, take out the time to sit and go deeper into understand. Meditation is nothing but knowing yourself, realizing who you are. It's only you'll know yourself when you think deeply through knowledge. And once you realize it's about feeling that beauty for yourself in meditation. So meditation is being in your truth. Living that truth every moment while you're doing work. So for the slides, you can reach out to the center. Um, send an email to the center for the slides. But we do have the recording of this on YouTube. You can go to Silicon Valley Brahma Kumari's uh, YouTube channel. You will find the recording of this session. So some short tips, uh, short term tips for reducing stress. And these are the tips for or you can say assignment for today. First one is um, practice this throughout the day. That whenever your mind says, finish this task, then you will be peaceful. Get this one more thing, then you will be happy. Once again, tell your mind that joy is within. So I'm going to be in that joyful state, in the peaceful state, with the smiling face, then I will do everything. It's not at the end. Being is not in the end. It is in the front. So make sure throughout the day, maybe have a small mirror in your hand. Are you smiling while you're doing things? Understand, change. Joy is now. Peace is now because that is who I am. Stabilize in your honor. Don't wait for the honor later. When you do that, you'll find so many people come and tell you, man, you, you have such a beautiful smile or you get things done so beautifully. When you stay in your honor, everybody comes and gives you honor. Second thing is reconnect. Work, work, work. It destroys the warmth of the heart. It shortens the time. Very important to take pauses at work, whether it's at home or at uh, office. Take pauses and talk to people. Make your connection. Otherwise, it becomes very cold. You become very robotic. So very important to connect with others. So take breaks during work. Talk to someone. If someone comes to talk to you, stop that work. Give your 100% presence to that person. Then reevaluate. 
I would highly recommend check your to-do list. See if there are some things that you can get rid of. Our overloaded numerator is not at all helpful if we are getting stressed. So if you reduce the number of tasks outside, maybe some social connections could be chopped, some activities that are useless, especially social media, if you can chop some time there, then you get the time automatically for taking care of yourself. And then prioritization. Through meditation, there is this app called B. Zone. You can check it out. It has multiple guided meditation. It has uh, timers and alarms where it will prompt you that it's time for you to meditate. It will prompt you at different hours. And read something empowering. This is the blog thought for today, org.uk. There are small, small articles. Every day, read one and go into the depth of it. After reading an article, just, just don't say it is good. But say, how will I bring it in my life? How can I use what was in this article in my life? What part of my life can I change? What part of my personality I can change? Right? So these tips of reframing yourself, reconnecting, reevaluating, prioritizing, these things will help in reducing stress. So you will stop stressing and start living. That is what we wanted to cover in today's session. Um, another moment for any thoughts or questions. No questions? Okay. If you have a minute, please stay back for a short guided meditation. Honor cannot be received unless I give it to my own self. Every day, first thing in the morning, I'm precious. I am special. Not because I've accomplished or I've done or I have this personality. I don't need any reason. I don't need any proof. Truth needs no proof, no validation. And God is called the truth. And he says, you're special. You're my child. You can't be anything but special, extraordinary. Every day, let me eat this praise that God has for me. Not with ego or pride, but with pure pride. That in God's vision, every soul is already honorable, already special. So when I sit in that honor, I come from a space of security, clarity, abundance, and I'm able to give 100% to everything I do. No task is then too little for me, or no task is too big for me. My ego has been chopped. I'm such an honorable being. I have to help everyone. I have to do everything. But with a lot of love, a lot of joy. I am a very special, extraordinary being. Thank you all for joining us today.
next week will be the last class on stress. Uh, hope to see you all then. But you have a stress-free week, peaceful week ahead. Take care, everyone. Om Shanti.